Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and it looks like things are heading back to normal with a side of Encanto on Billboard Breakdown. I, don't remember. I get the feeling that holiday music is going to take its sweet time leaving the Hot 100 this year, which is one reason why this week feels so transitional. Everything's kind of in flux as the chart rebalances, and with the weekend dropping an album this upcoming Friday that's bound to throw everything up in the air, I'm not exactly placing a lot of weight in what we're seeing, at least for right now. But hey, when we look at our top 10, holiday music is not leaving without a fight, as All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah. I carry is still clinging hard to that number one. Streaming will certainly help in that regard, but Easy On Me by Adele is chasing right behind her at number two. Radio picked up for her in a big way and the sales are still good, so this is likely going to retake the number one comfortably next week. Then we got a block of our Christmas music. Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee at number three. Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Helms at number four. And A Holly Jolly Christmas by Burl Ives at number five. All these are going to fall back in due time the interesting question will be how quickly. Because Stay by Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber is not far behind rebounding to number six, especially with radio that's mostly stable. And that also means that Heat Waves by Glass Animals also isn't that far behind as it jumped back into the top ten at number seven, basically because the radio is guaranteed this isn't going away. Then we have It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year by Andy Williams at number eight, and that opens the door for Shivers by Ed Sheeran to slip back up to number 9, which has persisted thanks to remarkably stable radio and solid sales as well. Finally, Feliz Navidad by Jose Felicicano clings on to number 10. Uh, the sooner this is gone, the better. But on that note, our losers and dropouts, where in the latter category, it was pretty much just lesser holiday hits and all of that small Roddy Rich album bomb. Nothing really that much of notice. And outside of Broadway Girls by Lil Durk and Morgan Wallen stumbling off that debut to number 30, the rest of our losers here, they're Christmas songs. Let It Snow by Dean Martin to 34, Santa Baby by Eartha Kitt to 45, It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas by Michael Bublé at 47, Merry Christmas by Ed Sheeran and Elton John at 67, and thankfully, Christmas Isn't Cancelled, Just You by Kelly Clarkson is tanking off the debut to 93. But we did see a lot of gains and rebounds. It's going to be interesting how many of these caught a fragment of year-end buzz versus those that might actually last a little bit longer. So let's start with the latter category. Doja Cat in particular had a really good week with Kiss Me More with SZA back at 38 and You Right with The Weeknd at 42. But Essence by Wizkid, Thames, and Justin Bieber saw the biggest jump back to 36 with the rest being songs that are just barely clinging to the charts like Doing This by Luke Combs at 88, Half of My Hometown by Kelsey Ballerini and Kelly Chesney at 89, and Poke It Out by Wale and J. Cole at 90. Can't all be winners. Then when we go to our gains, it's kind of tough to gauge what's actually going to stick here, especially when we see the songs that rebounded from losses last week. Already mentioned Shivers, but then we got Industry Baby by Lil Nas X and Jack Harlow at number 12. Need to Know by Doja Cat at 14. A, B, C, D, E, F, U by Gale at 17. Fancy Like by Walker Hayes at 33. One Right Now by Post Malone and The Weeknd at 39. And My Universe by Coldplay and BTS at 72. But after the slight boost off the debut for Do It To It by a Craze featuring Cherish at 87. Kind of all over the place. Regrettably, Super Gremlin by Kodak Black seems way too stable up to 16. Bad Habits by Ed Sheeran saw a soft rebound to 19. That's What I Want by Lil Nas X hits 35. Oh My God by Adele looks like the next big single at 40. Thinking About You by Dustin Lynch and Mackenzie Porter went to 44. Better Days by Naked, May Muller, and Polo G hit 46. And Message in a Bottle by Taylor Swift got a light boost to 80. I'm still surprised they're pushing this. But the one decent surprise was a surprising amount of good country getting a nice lift, with One Mississippi by Kane Brown held up to 60, Till You Can't by Cody Johnson got a nice bounce to 70, Freedom Was a Highway by Jimmy Allen and Brad Paisley went up to 73, and Heart on Fire by Eric Church went up to 78. Again, no guarantees given that it's music row and most of these are relatively low and we got some weeks of turbulence ahead, but hey, nice to hope, right? Well, anyway, we got a reasonable number of new arrivals this week. Unfortunately, starting off with number 99, 23 by Sam Hunt. I'll never be 23 with anyone 
but you You can marry who you want Go back to Tennessee But you'll never be 23 With anyone but me Because that's what starting off 2022 needs Sam Hunt Or for him to just actively engage with his career Because people will give this guy hits on basically nothing Anyway, this is actually not a song from Southside Thank the higher powers Where he's reminiscing about an old relationship of which I would have less of an issue if the majority of his catalog hasn't been very openly about his current partner, and most often not in an all that complimentary way, and I wouldn't even bring it up if the content of this song didn't feel so weirdly possessive. A song where it's very clear that she skipped town and moved on with her life, and likely with someone new, but Sam Hunt really wants to get into her head and say, you might be sophisticated, but you drink too much now, you don't like those skirts, and you probably reminisce about me and everything I wanted to define about my connection with you at the past and the time, especially when this is all about being 23. Sam Hunt is 37. Yeah, he's got that line where he says he hopes that you're happy now, but I've heard bro country artists make the sort of wistful song about their girl going to California before. Jake Owen did it masterfully with LAX. And Sam Hunt just doesn't come across as reflective or sincere. I mean, the best thing I can say about this is that the production's actually kind of interesting this time around. The groove is a little bit more refined and punchy off of some of the processed warmer guitars. It's almost playing to a new disco flavor of country. But why do I feel like Sam Hunt is playing catch up to what Kane Brown, Thomas Rhett, and even with Seven Summers, Morgan Wallen have done in the past couple of years? Oh look, I can take this in, I can say that it's nowhere near as bad as what Sam Hunt can do, but I don't know, there's something about his weirdly vacant delivery and certain lyrical details that no good groove will salvage. So while it might not be terrible, it's not good. I don't care for this. Number 96, Beers on Me by Dirk Bentley, Brayland, and Hardy. On your mind, locals on tap, and bottles on ice, living on feel good standard time. Okay, at this point, the only way to view Dirk Bentley's charting songs, it's a mechanism for him to get enough money to work on the stuff he genuinely likes that's never going to become hits. Now, it sucks as a fan of the guy that I don't expect any of this to be good, but hey, if it means more hot country nights down the line, we can take it, right? Well, at least this is just tepid and forgettable, not outright bad. The percussion groove feels weirdly heavier off the guitars, but at least it carries a little bit more organic texture. The sort of track that just lumbers into place and kind of squats there with limited effort from everyone involved, especially as it's pretty much just a barroom commiseration song that really doesn't have that much in the way of distinctive presence or writing. Seriously, even if I think the vocal mixing is a little bit rougher than it should be, I gotta say, neither Hardy nor Brayland have much in the way of interplay or harmonizing with Dirk Bentley. Feels more like a collaboration for the names and the connections rather than making a song that's worth caring about. Sure, maybe not bad, but I'm gonna forget this exactly exist in record time. Just saying. Number 94, Pressure by Ari Lennox. Don't be timid when you in it, play that Love upon it, give alone, need it. This might be the first time where I've seen Ari Lennox has got some solo penetration on the Hot 100. I mean, took Dreamville long enough to throw some serious weight behind her, given the persistent underground buzz she's had for the past couple of years, but looks like they've got the single. And this one's kind of tricky to evaluate. The production is pretty reliant on an old Shirley Brown sample off the guitar and the slight touches of piano, but it does make for some interesting ad-libs integrated. Shame that the hi-hat and the percussion feel so painfully stiff and mechanical, which I gotta say is not really a good compliment for Ari Lennox. That's honestly where I have struggled a little bit with her catalog in the past. She's not all that tight or controlled with her delivery, but she's also got a lot of natural range and presence, which means that you kind of need the right production that gives her a lot of space and foundation. The whole SZA approach would be great for her, and I'm not sure this exactly works. Without jittery the groove is, the vocals kind of just tumble all over everything. And I'm also not sure I love the writing here either. Basically, it's trying to walk the line of being hot as all hell and having made it and wanting the attention, but also very much on her terms, with a lot of mixed messaging and the give and take. Now, that's generally fine for this brand of R&B, but... 
I don't know. I wish it felt a little bit more distinctive, or we got more than just the one verse in the bridge. Still, it is interesting. I think this could grow on me, but compared to some of her past work, it hasn't won me over just yet. Still good, though. I guess I'll take it. Number 92, I Am Woman by Emmy Melly. This is one of those cases where I heard about the backlash before I heard the song itself, which apparently has gone viral on TikTok. And here I was thinking it was a cover of the old Helen Reddy song from 50 years ago, but go figure. Anyway, it's kind of tough to tell from where Emmy Melly actually came from. She's signed a disruptor in Arista. I have no idea how long this was actually in development, because it certainly feels like something that comes out of a label trying to replicate an organic pop hit, but with no coherent idea on how to structure one, because, uh, wow. Oh, this is rough. Emmy Melly sounds like the jerkier, more exaggerated version of the Lord Wannabes like Dea from the mid-2000s. With some really wonky vocal mixing, I've heard demos that sound better, but when you pair it with that oily guitar pickup, the flat low-end synth, and all the gauzy layers drizzled all over it that can't build any presence or groove, it just sounds flat in a really ugly way. It can't even pretend to pay off that slightly rougher guitar they tack on at the very end. And I gotta be honest, it kind of kills the whole empowerment anthem vibes very quickly for me. There's no arc or crescendo that really builds to it, and because I don't think it's ironic given how bluntly ridiculous all the lyrics are, it feels like an attempt at earnestness that just doesn't really translate. Maybe this works better for a younger audience that will embrace more of this sound unironically, and Emmy Melly being the only writer of this does kind of help it feel a little less obviously committee designed, but it feels clunky and cloying, and if it gets any sort of radio, it's gonna get aggressively irritating in record time. I mean, it's not good, but I've heard worse in this territory. It doesn't bug me that much. Yet. Number 83, Hours and Hours by Money Long. I could do this for hours and hours and hours. I could do this for hours and hours and hours. I could do this for hours and hours. Honestly, there's a part of me that just wants to talk about who Money Long actually is, because while you might not know this pseudonym, you might recognize her name Priscilla Renea, under which she actually put out two albums, one in 2009, one in 2018, and she's also co-wrote a lot of songs, and it's one hell of a mixed catalog. On the one hand, we got Pitbull's Timber, Rihanna's California Kingbed, Ariana Grande's popular song. On the other hand, we got Fifth Harmony's Worth It, and Chris Brown's Don't Wake Me Up and Florida Georgia Line's new truck. So I didn't know what the hell she was going to put out with this, especially as she's had a tendency to flit across genres even in her own music. But yeah, this is just pretty much pure R&B, calling back to all the songs she wrote with Kay Michelle and Tamar Braxton, with the liquid guitar behind the supple percussion and the bass line. And I mean... She's an expressive singer, but the vocal mixing and effects tacked on to clean up some of the rougher delivery, it's kind of obvious. It doesn't exactly flatter a song that's all about intimacy and organic time spent together. And there is something about the song that feels like a draft of an idea that needed a little bit of polish. Repeating hours and hours might give you a few good rhymes on the first verse, but as the song continues, it's got the feel of trying to stretch an idea and then it winds up feeling longer than it is. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad, I get why it went viral, but she has written better, and I hope under this rebrand, she can showcase that. Number 79, Christmas Tree by V. Falling for your eyes. I just want to be where you are. I mean... What am I supposed to expect from a Christmas song made by a member of BTS, and not one with a lot of solo credits? I mean, he's had a bit of traction with some cuts collected with BTS, but 
I didn't really know what to expect for a Christmas song, predominantly in English, that's being incorporated apparently into a Korean TV series. So what might be actually more surprising is that I actually like this a decent bit. Predominantly acoustic until they bring in a very low-key synth and a drum machine near the very end. It's most focused on V's huskier singing, longing for a former lover where he couldn't say everything that he wanted to and is still very much in love, and that translates effectively when it feels this very subtle and spare. It's not really a song that's trying to do a lot, and for as over-the-top as BTS can be, it reflects a level of restraint I wish they could balance out more effectively. But you know, for as their better ballads and J-pop side have proven, BTS can play in that territory, and I think V delivers well here. So yeah, it's a good song. Certainly a lot more of what I like around the holidays than most, so yeah. I'll take it. Number 54, Surface Pressure by Jessica Darrow. What is it with songs this week and pressure? It's the new year. I'd like a moment or two to relax a bit. But all right, in this case, and indeed for the last couple songs on this list, we're talking about soundtrack cuts from the newest Disney film, Encanto. Full disclosure, haven't had the chance to see it as of yet, but if reviews in my timeline are any indication, seems quite good. Further stacking the deck on the music by getting Lin-Manuel Miranda to write it, just like he did with Moana. And... No, well, with this one, I'm not sure I'm fully on board. Even if conceptually it's not bad, the eldest sister has had to hold the pressure for the younger siblings and starts to buckle a little bit under all of it, to the point where it starts to blur the line of whether or not she needs that pressure to keep going. But I'm not sure the song flatters Darrow's range. It feels a little bit low for her, as it sounds like she's almost trying to imitate Miranda's delivery. And that wiry synth and the faint twinkles behind the fizzy program percussion feels oddly unbalanced in the mid-range, in comparison with a more dominant low-end groove. Overall feels more like a character song, but one that could do more than it actually does. I'm just kind of lukewarm on it at best. It's got to be honest. It's not bad, but not sure it's good. And finally, number 50, We Don't Talk About Bruno by the Encanto cast. But okay, this was a song that got a lot of folks excited, many people calling it a highlight and predicting a really high streaming debut as more of an ensemble piece. And... Okay, it's a good story song, sets the scene, highlighting the precognitive powers of Bruno, laying the seeds for the arcs of the characters down the line, and I think the more textured Colombian groove sets the mood as the song keeps the secretive vibe, building across the family and the ensemble. And while I do appreciate how the musical motifs slip in for Isabella's part, I don't know, there is a stiffness to this composition that's not clicking for me. Something that I've noticed with Lin-Manuel Miranda's compositions for Disney, I've rarely been impressed with how his arrangement arrangements have built up to any sense of crescendos or really sold the drama. And in this case, the stakes of the scene don't ramp up as powerfully as you might expect, which okay, could make sense for a film all about a family squabble and given who Bruno actually is, but if you got larger than life characters, you think you could do a little bit more with it. Not saying it's bad, but it's a composition that gains its momentum and power based off the film rather than standing on its own. So encountering it here for the first time, it's fun. Mine, I guess, but I'm not wowed by it either. And it's honestly like kind of an odd note to end this week. And I honestly think V is going to get the best of it with Christmas Tree. An honorable mention going to Ari Lennox with Pressure. Just the most there that I think I like. Now with the worst, I'd argue it's kind of a toss-up because there might be slight redeeming factors for both. But I Am Woman with Emmy Melly. It's the dishonorable mention. Because there's something about 23 by Sam Hunt that just skeeves me out. Good groove, unpleasant song. It's the worst of this week. Although next week, the Christmas material is going to fall back. Who knows what's going to take its place in the meantime before the weekend comes. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.